We'll begin Mass this morning with hymn number 768, 768 from the hymn book. Can I invite you please to stand? The mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, good news. I'm not seeing peace, proclaiming news of happiness. I've got dreams, I've got dreams. morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome to our celebration of Mass today. It's the seventh Sunday of Eastertide. Welcome if you join us online. These nine days between the Feast of the Ascension, which we celebrated on Thursday, and the Feast of Pentecost, which we celebrate a week today, are in the life of the Church nine days a novena of prayer for the gifts of the Holy Spirit because it was the gift of the Holy Spirit that changed those disciples from being frightened men locked in an upper room as we're here today to being the courageous preachers of the good news and we've been hearing the farewell discourse as it were of Jesus over the past few weeks about the promise about what lies in the future and that the Lord leaves them not to abandon them but for them guided by the Spirit to carry on his work. That we, guided by the Spirit, may carry on the work of the Lord Jesus, we pray, and that we might celebrate worthily in word and in sacrament. We call to mind our sins and we ask God's pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, 
in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously hear our prayers, Lord God, so that we who believe that the Saviour of the human race is with you in your glory may experience, as he promised, until the end of the world, his abiding presence among us. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus was taken up into heaven, the Apostles went back from the Mount of Olives, as it is called, to Jerusalem, a short distance away, no more than a Sabbath walk. And when they reached the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. There were Peter and John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot and Jude, son of James. All these joined in continuous prayer together with several women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. The Lord is my light and my help, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, before whom shall I shrink? I am am sure sure I shall shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, for this I long, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. O Lord, hear my voice when I call, have mercy and answer. Of you my heart has spoken, seek, seek his face. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. The second reading is a reading from the first letter from St. Peter. If you can have some share in the sufferings of Christ, be glad because you will enjoy a much greater gladness when his glory is revealed. It is a blessing for you when they insult you for bearing the name of Christ, because it means that you have the spirit of glory, the spirit of God resting on you. None of you should ever deserve to suffer for being a murderer, a thief, a criminal, or an informer. But if any one of you should suffer for being a Christian, then he is not to be ashamed of it. He should thank God that he's been called one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stand please for the gospel. Alleluia. Alleluia. says the Lord, 
I will come back to you and your hearts will be full of joy. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that your Son may glorify you. And through the power over all mankind that you've given him, Let him give eternal life to those you have entrusted to him. And eternal life is this, to know you, the only true God, and Christ Jesus, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth and finished the work that you gave me to do. Now, Father, it is time for you to glorify me with the glory I had with you before ever the world was. I have made your name known to those you took from the world to give me. They were yours and you gave them to me. And they have kept your word. Now at last they know that all you have given me comes indeed from you. For I have given them the teaching you gave to me. And they have truly accepted this, that I came from you and have believed it was you who sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you've given me because they belong to you. All I have is yours and all you have is mine. And in them I am glorified. I'm not in the world any longer, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In common with many of you um, of a similar generation, I think we're just about baby boomers still, um, I've enjoyed, as I'm sure many of you have, most excellent opportunities for education. We have become an increasingly highly educated country. Uh, In the post-war years, the provision of primary school for all, and then of secondary school for all, and the provisions of the 1918 Education Act that allowed uh, the the equal education of all members of our society when the church handed over its schools the states uh, and to the state in return for the state funding of Catholic education, subject only to the bishop's approval of the religious education uh, syllabus and approval for teachers in Catholic schools. We've enjoyed a, a boom in opportunities for education and like many of you, I happily went to a Catholic primary school in Port Glasgow, a Catholic secondary school in Greenock Gurup border, St Columbus. Um, and then when I, I spoke to the bishop and I said that I'd like to see whether perhaps I might discern if I have a vocation or not, he very generously, and because of your generosity, we have an ecclesiastical students fund, as you know, and you give to it every year. Well, that pays for the education of those discerning vocation to priesthood in Scotland. So the bishop funded, you funded, through the bishop. Uh, my further education and my higher education uh, in Rome. So, as you know, went on to do an undergraduate degree in philosophy and then in theology. And subsequently, the bishop asked me to remain on uh, at university to do a postgraduate degree in the study of scripture. Uh, and so it was. So I found myself, um, he asked me, or he told me, because I had the promise of obedience by then, he told me that he wanted me to study the scriptures uh, so that I could then come home and teach at the seminary, and and so it came to pass, that's what happened. Um, But the the first part of studying the scriptures at the Biblical Institute in Rome was an intensive course in language. Um, They they have a wee phrase which is, uh, the translator is the traitor, it's a wee word play in Latin, Um, the translator is the traitor. Why? Because all translations are approximations, languages aren't parallel, so if you're rendering one set of concepts and ideas and words in another language, you've got to make compromises. Is it a strict equivalent? It doesn't make sense. 
or is it a, a, a dynamic correspondence? So it carries the meaning, but not the same words. So they wouldn't allow me to study either the Old Testament texts, which are written in Hebrew, or the New Testament texts is written in Greek without learning Hebrew and Greek. Uh, so there you go, that's your work for a year, go, and, go away and learn Hebrew and Greek. So this, this I did. Um, it was great fun. So I, I like language, as, as probably you know, I had done uh, uh, hires in languages at, at secondary school. So kind of, it, I had a facility for it more than I had for maths uh, and, and physics and things like that, I have to say. Anyways, so, so it was. So what I found fascinating about it was the way ideas and concepts related around language. The word that we translate as such and such has a lot of um, connections called semantic field, has a lot of connections to other ideas, other concepts, and you don't necessarily think about that in English because it doesn't happen in English, but in other languages, particularly ancient languages, particularly Hebrew, which has a relatively small vocabulary, um, a number of words are reused because in, in their mind, in the Hebrew mind, they were connected. So. So, when I hear the gospel today, it's got the word glory or glorified in it eight times, you think, what, what's this about glory? And I, I always think glory is a wee bit of those kind of thingy words. Um, we label it and then we pack it. We don't think about what it means. It's like grace. You say, oh yes, it's about grace. So you, you kind of give it a label uh, and you pack it and you don't bother thinking about what it means. But um, you've got to think about what it means if you're learning in another language because what does it actually mean? What does glory mean? In English, we tend to use it almost interchangeably with praise, as in give glory to God, praising the Lord in song and word and prayer and so on. And the Gloria, we, 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 we glorified God and we praised God. And, and so in English, maybe in our minds, those two things are connected, but not really in the biblical languages. The, the word for glory, kavod, as it happens, is also used for for a couple of other things. It, it, it's translated as glory, but it's also the word that's used for the liver, human liver, would you believe? And it means, it's the adjective for heavy in Hebrew. Now, we get liver and heavy because we know the liver is the heaviest organ in the body. It's quite substantial. Um, and uh, so that connection is obvious. What's glory got to do with weight? Um, well, the reason is, and it still exists just in, 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 in the very far reaches of a kind of arcane form of English, is if I give weight to someone or I give weight to opinion that belongs to somebody else, then I, I'm taking it very seriously. It's how, it's how I, I respect, it's how I, I take account of other people. So uh, a judge will say, well, given the weight of opinion or given the weight of previous judgments, so what he's saying is, this weighs heavily in the scales of justice. So I, if I give weight to what somebody's opinion is, then I'm saying it's worthy of respect. And maybe it's better than my opinion about something. Um, so when the Hebrews say that they give glory to God, it means that rather than following what they want to do themselves, they follow what they discern to be the will of God. And we know that those two things are not always the same. And we're left sometimes with a, with a decision to make. Will we do what I want to do, or we, will we do what we have discerned that God asks of us? And that's what glory means. That's what give glory to God means. It gives added weight. It gives greater weight to God's will for me than my will for myself. And so when I hear Jesus say, I have glorified you, Father, now you glorify me. So um, he's talking as about to depart, saying to the disciples, well, do you know, this is how you will do what I do. You give glory to God. Make sure God's will is more important than simply your own will. And if the two are in conflict, then you probably know where your responsibilities lie. Because, of course, we recognize we have the ability to fool ourselves and delude ourselves um, and persuade ourselves that what we really want to do is the best thing for everybody. And so they better just come along with my opinion. Um, actually, as Christians, members of the family of God, members of the church, we give weight to others and above all, we give glory to God. So that our lives might be marked not by our own whims, but by our giving weight to God, our giving glory to God for each other and ourselves, we pray today.
to profess our faith together, we stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Spirit was incarnate for the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again from the dead, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and ascended to heaven. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We make known our needs and prayers in the presence of God, our loving Father. We pray for the people of your church, those you have called to hear and believe your word. Draw them together in unity, inspired by the mutual love of the Father and the Son, to be as one in faith and hope and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all the people of the world that Christ came to save, those who acknowledge his power and those who do not know him, we ask that his glory may shine upon them and make them his own. As he has authority over all, may those who exercise power learn the way of his justice and his mercy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Protect those whom you have given us in love to be our families and friends. Guide them with the grace promised to all who are your own. And help us to spread by word and example the knowledge of your glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Come tenderly to those who, having heard and sought to fall, have fallen away and lost the vision that once they knew. Bring them back to the way that leads to eternal life. Have mercy on the sick. Grant them healing and renewal of life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember those who in this world began their eternal life through faith and have entered into its fullness. As they now, in your presence, so may we grow in grace towards the vision of glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. To these our general intercessions, we add prayer for our own particular and local needs. We remember those who have asked us to pray for them particularly those whom we know to be in need at this time. Pray for those who join us on the live stream, particularly if they are unwell or caring for others, either as their vocation in life or in the context of their families and households. The Lord will be with them. Give them strength, bless and reward their generosity of heart. And we pray finally for our dead. We remember those who have died recently, especially Rita Turner, whose funeral we celebrated on Friday, and Ken Crawley, who died yesterday morning. And we pray also for those whose anniversaries occur around now, especially those we've been asked to remember in prayer. May they all know the presence of God. Lord, hear us. God our Father, we seek to give you glory by the choices we make in our lives. Guide us so that in word and example we may be your witnesses. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Take our hearts, we love you, take our lives. 
lives. Oh, Father, we are yours. We are yours. Yours as we stand at the table you set. Yours as we eat the bread our hearts can't forget. We are the signs of your life with us yet. We are yours. We are yours. Take our bread. We ask you take our hearts. We love you take our lives. Oh, Father, we are yours. We are yours. Hungry, we await your food. Poor though we are, we have brought ourselves to you. We are yours. We are yours. Take our bread. We ask you take our hearts. We love you. Take our lives. Oh, Father, we are yours. Let's stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands in the grace and glory of His name. For our good and the good of all this holy church. Accept, Lord, we pray, the prayers of your faithful people with these offerings, that through our acts of devotion we may know the glories of heaven. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. The heavenly powers, the angelic host, they sing together the unending hymn of your glory. May our voices be one with theirs and all the saints, as together we acclaim. Holy, holy. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and the working of your holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather to yourself a people so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the, passion, the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon this offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, our spouse, the apostles and the martyrs, St. Conville and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and in charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Join our bishop, the order of bishops, the clergy, the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. For the coming of God's kingdom, we pray in the words the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
our novena of prayer for the gifts of God's Holy Spirit, we offer as a hymn. Uh, we sing it each day between Ascension and Pentecost. It's number 296 in the hymn book 296. Come, Holy Ghost, Creator, come from thy bright heavenly throne. Come, take possession of our souls and make them all thy own. Thou who art called the Paraclete, best gift of God above. Let's stand and pray. <laughs> Hear us, Lord God, our Saviour, and grant us confidence that through our celebration of these mysteries there will be accomplished in the whole body of the Church what has already come to pass for Christ our Head. He who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to familiarize yourself with the latest notices either in the bulletin on Facebook or on the webpage. Thank you for being here today and um, thanks for your ongoing support for our efforts to feed those in need uh, either through donations of, of money and of foodstuffs. Thank you. We are able to continue to do that thanks to your generosity and it's very much appreciated as you can imagine. Thanks if you joined us online. I hope you have a lovely day and a good week and a good week ahead. We ask God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join with our final hymn, number 356. Number 356. Oh, 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 oh,